Welcome back to Decked Out. On today's episode, we are joined by Maldhound and Megan Smith from Wizards of the Coast. And each player has brought to the table a deck list submitted by one of our community members through Moxfield. And congratulations to those community members that were selected. Scraps McGee, Aklarank, Cameron WHD, and Marginal Meaning. Their decks are the ones that we'll be playing today. And of course, thank you to our sponsors for today's episode, Cool Stuff Inc. and Moxfield. But more on them later in the video. That's enough from us for now. Let's go ahead and meet the players. Hi everybody, my name is Maldhound. You can find me on YouTube and TikTok. Today I'm here playing a community deck list submitted by Scraps McGee, helmed by Elenda and Azor, the world's current leading example of Esper not needing the help. What I will actually be trying to do is pay as much life as possible after sticking an effect that allows me to not lose the game like Lich's Mastery, and then using another card to redistribute those life totals so I can get somebody else's juicy juicy 40 and they can have something in the neighborhood of negative 12. Hey there, my name is Megan Smith. I'm a game designer over at Wizards of the Coast. Today I'm playing Bronze Pandas Karn Legacy Reforged deck. This deck is here to make a ton of mana and produce a lot of big artifact creatures that I'm going to start swinging at people's faces to hopefully kill everybody with some really big sweet artifact creatures. Hello everybody, I'm MTG Nerd Girl, and today my community submitted list is from Marginal Meaning, and we're going to be playing Falco Spara. This deck cares a lot about counters. We're gonna be putting shield counters and plus one, plus one counters, and then we can convert those into card advantage. I'm Veggie Wagon, and today I get to play Cameron WHD's Runo Stromkirk list. Of course, he's not gonna be Runo Stromkirk for long because we're gonna try and flip him into Krothus as fast as possible, and then start churning out copies of the biggest sea monsters you can imagine. And of course, all of those big sea monsters have enter the battlefield triggers and evasion, so we're just going to get value and big beats all game. Thanks to today's episode sponsor, Moxfield, we were able to take community submissions for all the deck lists we feature on today's show. Moxfield is an all-inclusive deck building site. You can catalog your collection, update your personal deck lists, follow your favorite deck builders, and share all of your decks with your friends. So if you would like to support our content, make sure you head on over to Moxfield so that way you can upload your deck lists to ensure that you're ready the next time we have this opportunity. You can also follow our Moxfield account so you stay up to date on all of the decks featured on the show. All right, it's that time. Let's get into the game. Welcome to the table. Let's see who goes first, guys. 14. 13. 2. 19. Dang it. Hey, we'll take that. Okay. I stole your dime, sorry. Hey, you, you're welcome to with that with that 19. <laughs> Ready to go? Let's mm -hmm. play. All right, I'm yeah. going to draw. I'm going to play a basic wastes and a manifold key. Manifold key lets me tap one to untap another target artifact, or I can pay three to tap it and target creature can't be blocked this turn. I'm going to play a Morphic Pool on tap because I have opponents and pass turn. I'm going to play Prairie Stream, which enters tapped because I do not control enough basics and pass. Let's start with a Broker's Hideout. When it enters the battlefield, I'm going to sacrifice it. And when I do, I'm going to search for a basic forest, plains, or island, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle and gain a life. The card I will search for is a forest and I'll pass. I'll play another basic Wastes and I will play an Everflowing Chalice kicked for two. So multi-kicker two, it enters the battlefield with a charge counter on it for each time it was kicked, which is one, and then I can tap it for each charge counter on it. And I will pass after that. Ooh, that, that manifold key everflowing chalice for one combo. <laughs> Have you ever just wanted to take superfluous game actions? Yeah, I, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm going to play an island, and then I'm going to tap two for likeness looter. Uh, it's a one-one flyer. It can loot draw a card and discard a card, uh, and I can pay X to make it a copy of a creature in my graveyard that costs that much, but it also has flying and that ability. I will untap my prairie stream. I will play the Glacial Fortress, which enters untapped because this is both a plains and an island. I will tap both for a dirty mana rock, and I will pass the turn. Let's start with a plains, and we're going to tap it for a Biophagus. A 1-3 that can tap to add mana of any color if it was spent to cast a creature spell. That creature enters with an additional plus one plus one counter on it instead. And I'll pass the turn. I'll untap. Beautiful. I'll play another basic wastes here. I have access to four mana on this turn, so I will 
pay four for a Hedron Archive. It taps to add two colorless, and I can pay two to sacrifice it to draw two cards. And then I will do some quick mental math here. Oh, now we're going to get mana folded all over. I'm going to float two colorless. I'll pay one of it. So I have one colorless floating to untap this artifact. I have three mana now in my mana pool. I'll use that to cast a Chief of the Foundry. Other artifact creatures I control get plus one, plus one. That's I'm scared already. Algebraic. I didn't follow that. That's cheating. You've pooped out so much of your hand. I'll run out of cards eventually. I'm going to start by activating Likeness Looter to draw a card and discard. I'm going to discard this Shipbreaker Kraken. Uh, it's just a big Kraken. I would not worry about it. I'm going to play a Swamp and I'm going to pay three for Runo Stromkirk. Um, one for Flyer, when he enters the battlefield, I put up to one target creature from my graveyard on top of my library. At the beginning of my upkeep, I will look at the top card of my library, and if uh, it is a creature card with mana value six or greater, I can show you all it and transform Runo. I'm just going to put this little Kraken right on top of my library and pass the turn. Please, God, somebody shuffle this man's library. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to play another dual land that will enter untapped because of my helpful Plains Island. I will tap one and a blue for the Triskai Decafile, which I have no maximum hand size anymore. And at the beginning of my upkeep, if I have 13 cards in hand, I win the game and I can pay man into it to draw cards, but I don't have enough now, so pass. I'm going to start with a Prairie Stream. We'll come into play untapped because I control some basics. As far as mana goes, I've had a pretty good start and I could just play Falco and get started, but I'm a little worried that he might get removed and I don't have any other payoffs in my hand. So I wanna make sure I have a chance to get set up before I start really developing. I'm gonna use Biophages to cast Rishkar. It's a 2-2, two will -two. come into play and put a counter on up to two creatures and each creature I control with a counter on it can tap for a forest. And I'll get an additional counter on it because I use the Biophages mana. Uh, I will tap this last one and we're going to go ahead and cast a Noble Hierarch, an O1 with Exalted. If a creature attacks alone, it gets plus one, plus one, and it can also tap for green, white, or blue. So we're ramping. Pass. Oh, Lord. I will play another basic. Tap for two. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, do the little untap trick from the last turn. So I have three floating. Four, five. I will cast... Karn, Legacy Reforged. His power and toughness are each equal to the greatest mana value among artifacts I control. And at the beginning of my upkeep, I can add colorless mana for each artifact I control. That mana cannot be spent to cast non-artifact spells, and it does not empty as steps and phases end. So currently he is a 5-5 because he himself is the biggest artifact that I control. Uh, well, he's a 6-6 six, six, actually because I have this handy dandy Chief of the Foundry. So, be so look out! And then I've got three mana left. I'm going to pass suspiciously. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't oh, be friend. suspicious. <laughs> at my upkeep, Runo is going to trigger. I'm going to take a look at whatever this card is on the top of my library. Oh, look, it's a creature with, pa with a mana cost of six or more. Runo is going to transform into... Krothus, Lord of the Deep. Uh, it's three five flyer, and when it attacks, I create a tapped and attacking token that is a copy of another target attacking creature. And if it's a Kraken, Leviathan, Octopus, Serpent, I make two of those tokens instead. Um, do I need another likeness looter? I hate making free copies of spells. The worst. Right. No. <laughs> Where's no, the no. value? I, I would much rather draw oh, cards. I can, only, I can only draw two unnecessary cards a turn. <laughs> Whatever will I do? Wherever will I go? I'm going to play a Swamp. Uh, I'm going to go to combat. And let's send... How, how open do I want to leave myself to... It, completely. Um, <laughs> I'm going to swing with uh, Likeness Looter and Krathus. Um, I will send... The looter to Nerd Girl and Krathus to Megan. Seems fair. Mm -hmm. And then Krathus is going to trigger. I'm going to make a copy of Likeness Looter, uh, which will also head to Nerd Girl. All right, so I'll take three. Mm -hmm. All right. Three commander. I got no blocks, so I'll take two. All right, and I will also pass unsuspiciously with four mana open. You're going to be cool, man, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to play a swamp for turn. Tap four to activate the Triskei Decapile's ability to draw another card and pass suspiciously. Because that's the theme. I don't like this. <laughs> Everybody has a lot of open mana and I was planning on doing something cool. Beware of all my colorless counter spells. I was going to do something really cool, but now I don't know that I can. Do it. Just don't do it to me. <laughs> wow. That seems fair. Are you two going to let me hit Maldhound? <laughs> In what world? Look, I don't see I, why I would stop you. I support you doing the big cool thing as long as this is not this way. Sorry, Maldhound. Don't apologize. I, won't. I, would, I would prefer it if my life total could look like negative 20. And so <laughs> that's true. I I'm actually, you I'll know what? You. Bring it on in. Bring All right. it on in. All right. Well, we will bring it. We're going to start with a sword of truth and justice. I got to let you say it first. I got to let you read the card first. <laughs> you just took a breath expectantly. <laughs> he did. He was like a free counter spell breath. <laughs> yes, it was. Equip creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from blue and white. And whenever equip creature deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature, and then I may proliferate. To be clear, the pre counter spell breath is. <sighs> and that was not it? That was not it. Okay, cool. I have no response to that. Great. I'm going to go ahead and pay two to equip. Rishkar. And Rishkar is going to come in and attempt to attack Mauled Hound. So Rishkar is going to come in for two, four, six, and seven with the Exalted. Thank you. No blocks. All right. So when I deal combat damage to Mauled Hound, I'll get to put a plus one, plus one counter onto a creature and then proliferate. So I'll get to go to two and... Would you like to proliferate my three Everflowing Chalice? And two and no, I would not. <laughs> Damn. And I will pass the turn. You have more than enough mana. I had to shoot my shot. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's that is a re that's a proliferate requirement. When somebody yeah. else does it, you always hey. have to be like, huh? <laughs> All right. At the beginning of my upkeep, I will now add colorless mana for each artifact I controlled. I will make one, two, three, four, five colorless mana here. All right. That is what that does. A totally reasonable amount of colorless mana to have not empty from your pool. Mm -hmm. Until the end of the turn. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. My <laughs> I apologies. Will, I will draw for turn now. I will play a Temple of the False God. Uh, this allows me to add two to my mana pool, uh, but I can only activate it if I control five or more lands, which I do. I will first pay one to play a Soul Ring. Then we'll do some math again. Uh, I will cast a Joyrus Familiar. Historic spells I cast cost one less to cast. That includes artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. So then, now that I have all my mana creation in play, now I will spend all my mana on something ridiculous. Oh god. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll do that little trick that I did earlier. This will be technically eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I will cast a Hangerback Walker. X is six. Hangerback Walker says it enters the battlefield with X 1-1 one, one counters on it. When it dies, create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter Artifact creature token with flying for each 1-1 one, one counter on it. And I can pay one to tap it to put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. I have one mana floating, blue player. Oh no, oh. that's the counter spell breath. Oh, sorry, sorry. I just <laughs> had, a, had a little something in my... A it, it resolves. priority. It resolves. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'll enter with six counters. Okay, everybody, I will give you one tip for when you're playing against me. If I have mana open, the odds that I actually have an answer in my hand are honestly pretty low. I have nothing right now. I will attempt to attack Veggie. Since he didn't have the counter spell, I am deathly curious what he has in his hand. Uh, so I will send six at Veggie. I don't think that's how that worked. Um, I will choose not to counter your attack as well uh, <laughs> and take six. <laughs> Commander damage. All right, uh, that's the end of my turn. I lose this floating mana. Got her. And I will put the right, all together. Right where we want them. <laughs> and pass to you. That's zero cards in hand now? Surely that I'm must... I'm not the threat anymore. Yeah, surely that, mean, that must mean it's the end of the <laughs> right, bad things right. you can do. <laughs> Glad that I kept all of these counters for other things that I'm worried about. I'm going to uh, tap Likeness Looter to draw and discard. I'm going to discard this Elder Brain, which I would also not worry about. Huh? Uh, if for some reason it were to be relevant, it's a 6-6 six, six Menace that steals your entire hand. Um, Deal. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're right. I'm not worried. 
I think I got to do that again. I will. I will loot again. This is awful. I think this is how I have to do this. I'm going to discard Gadwick the Wizen because I could not find my third blue source. Uh, I'm going to play a Swamp and pay three to make this likeness looter a copy of Gadwick. So now when I cast a blue spell, I can tap some something of yours. Identity theft is a real crime. It happens every day in America <laughs> and maybe other places. I will pass the turn. So sick of you. Yep. Uh, just in time for me to draw that out. Mm -hmm. You will deal with this? Yes. <sighs> yes. <laughs> uh, the thing about that, Bestie, is I'm going to play a swamp for turn. I'm going to tap out and I'm going to play my commander, Alenda and Azor. So there's a 6-6 six, six flyer with ward 2. Whenever they attack, I can pay X and then white, blue, black for Esper. And if I do, draw X cards. At the beginning of each end step, I can pay 4 life. If I do, create a number of 1-1 one, one black vampire knight creature tokens with lifelink equal to how many cards I've drawn that turn. Now, when the time comes, I can pay that every end step for zero, but we're not at that time yet. And so I'm going <laughs> to go to my end step. Um, this time, I will pay the four life to make one for the card that I drew in my draw step. So here is my little friend. He has lifelink, and it is now your turn. Before combat, I'm going to pay for my commander copycat falco spara it's going to come into play with an additional plus one plus one counter because i use the biophagus and he himself is a three three flying trample he enters the battlefield with a shield counter on him i can look at the top card of my library at any time and i may cast spells from the top of my library by removing a counter from a creature i control in addition to paying its cost so we're going to get a shield counter and a plus one plus one from the falco spara and we're going to go to combat and, you know, Veggie, you're the only one I can get a clean hit on. So uh, Rishkar is going to come to you. We're going to get the Exalted Trigger. So that'll be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, pro blue. I will allow that to happen. Great. When that happens, I can go ahead and put a plus one, plus one counter onto a creature. I'm going to choose my commander. And then I will get to proliferate. So I will put a third counter, a fourth counter, and a third counter. And finally, because we get to do this, we'll also get a second copy of the shield counter. Super indestructible. Uh. And then I will pass the turn. All right. I'll untap all of my permanents, the very many permanents that I have, so many permanents. Uh, go to my upkeep. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I will float eight. Oh, I need a bigger dice for all my mana oh, and all my permanence. <laughs> what are the what are the chances it's Kozilek on top of that deck right now? <laughs> manifesting, manifesting. I will draw for turn. Uh, I'll go down to six. I'll use two of my mana. I'm going to sacrifice this Hedron Archive to draw two cards. I have so much mana, I don't really need this anymore. Uh, so I'll put this into my graveyard and scooch all this over and draw two. I will play a Hall of Tagson. It taps for a colorless and I can filter for a colored mana if I need to, but it also lets me pay four to tap it to create a tapped power stone token. I have so many permanents. <laughs> I don't know where to put them all. Uh, I'm gonna use five of my colorless floating mana here and Joy is Familiar will give me an extra one to cast a Dreamstone Hedron. This lets me tap for three and then I can pay three to draw three cards. I can't believe they power crept the Hedron. <laughs> <laughs> it's a callback, as we would say. <laughs> All right, I will use this last floating mana, and I will activate my manifold key, targeting my Karn to make him unblockable this turn. I am going to attack the person with the highest life total, which is Nerd Girl. Oh. So this is currently six and seven. Seven unblockable damage coming at you. Commander. Commander damage, yes. Nerd Girl is going to be unassailable eventually. I'm not going to be able to attack through all those big creatures with my tiny little thopters eventually. But Maltound has all these weird things that make combat damage irrelevant. The only thing that can compete with lich effects and things that let you go to negative life is commander damage. It doesn't matter if you have negative life, you'll die if you have 21 commander damage. I thought about that for a while, but I think Nerd Girl is the biggest problem to solve right now. Pass the turn. Commander damage is You scary. got us, right, Veggie? I'm rocking with you. Did you say us? <laughs> yeah, I said us. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so much stuff I can't block now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play the swamp, and then I'm going to tap six 
for Gyruda, Doom of Depths. No. <laughs> so uh, it's a 6-6. Six, six. When it enters the battlefield, everybody is going to mill four cards. Uh, I get to put a creature with an even cost from all from among those cards onto the battlefield. I have no response to that. I Me have neither. no Let's response. Let's do it. All right. Vodalian Wave Knight, who is a four mana. I have not milled any creatures, but I'll show you the goodies. I have four. I hit uh, four mana producing things. You got rid of my Peer into the Abyss, which was super cool. My of you. even mana cost is a slippery bog bonder. Um, that is just not what we're looking for. Uh, at least slippery that's, bog bonder blocks, can block. Right. Well, this is draw uh, cards. Put a counter on each other, Merfolk and or Knight. So if you don't have Merfolk, oh, oh other, it's not. It can't even put it on itself. Nope. nope. Wow. All right, give me that. <laughs> give me that frog. <laughs> <laughs> Ribbit. <laughs> I'm going to put the sex proof counter on Krathis. Um, Gadwick, I did play a blue spell, so I'll tap. Uh, tap Falco Spara and I can punch her. I'll tap Falco Spara for no reason at all. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. Because my turn is after his turn. Yeah. And then I'll punch you. Sure. Okay. I was planning on going all this way next turn. Yeah. I am just tapping one of your things. I am not responsible for what happens after that. Oh. Yeah, I'm just going to get, get hit with a bunch of stuff anyway. So, Krothis, I'm going to send to Megan. And the likeness looter copy I'll send as a gift to my friend. <laughs> That's for you, Maul. So real of you. Yeah. Uh, when this attacks, I'm going to make another copy of the likeness looter. I will not be blocking. I'm going to declare Alenda and Azor blocking your likeness looter. And then here's my copy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> so you gain some life? Or no, I that, do oh. not. This doesn't have lifelink. Oh. The, the little, uh, yes, I did. Appre I do appreciate the attempt. The little guys I make have lifelink, but Alenda and Azor themselves do not. All good. Well, then I will pass. It's that 6-6 six, six thing that everybody audibly gasped about and I don't quite understand. Does that have reach? No. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the big thing, the giant thing with spindly arms reaching into the sky. No, it cannot block fly. Okay. We're going to play the Caves of Koilos as my land for turn. We'll move to combat. And Nerd Girl, are we united against the automaton menace? That was my plan. Uh, my plan, it might be slightly adjusted only because I, I thought... Megan was the problem, but Veggie keeps touching my stuff. So I, now I'm like moderately thinking Veggie might be my problem. I mean, Veggie's just but, a silly but little you guy. are not my problem. <laughs> okay. Okay. But th uh, that is for right. sure. Get, get in the comments. Threat assessment. Threat assessment. Get in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Veggie keeps touching my I'm stuff. Just a I'm just a little bean. I'm just a little bean. <laughs> uh, I'm going to move to combat. I am going to swing Alenda and Azor uh, at Megan. So mm -hmm. six in the air. The attack trigger will happen. I'm going to pay... The white, the blue, the black, and then four into that trigger. So I draw four cards and then move to blocks. Sure. Uh, I don't think I'm going to block that one, so I'll take another six. This will be commander yeah. damage from you. Six. Pow. Okay. And then uh, from there, I'll proceed to my end step. I will pay four life to trigger Alenda and Azor and make five additional vampires. So it will go up to six total. And then it is your turn, Nerd Girl. How many cards do you have in your hand right now? Ten. Mm, not 13? Not 13. Excellent. No. Yes. Can oh, do you just win at 13? I just uh, win upkeep. Oh, on, up, yeah. on upkeep. Narc. We're still <laughs> 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 All right. Let's go ahead and start by playing a Conclave Mentor. If one or more counters would be put onto a creature, I put that many plus one instead. And when Conclave Mentor dies, I gain life equal to its power. And because I used the Biophage's mana, I will get a counter onto the Conclave Mentor, which will actually be two, which is great. What is letting you tap my stuff? You get to do that every time you do what now? Whenever I play a blue spell. Well, I got smacked last time, so I would say that's even. <laughs> so if I don't get smacked this time, then I don't have to tap anything. You didn't even get hit for that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing happened. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Too Worst many. trade deal in the history of trade <laughs> deals. <laughs> Nine, ten. Oh, that's too many. I'm going to go ahead and play Kadama of the West Tree for three mana. It's a 3-3 three, three with reach that says modified creatures I control have trample. Whenever a modified creature I control deals combat damage to a player, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and shuffle. 
This setup is perfect. Getting to proliferate with my sword, they can't block it. Those creatures have trample. And every time I proliferate, I get two counters from the Conclave Mentor. You couldn't ask for a better setup. Maltown didn't hit me. Veggie, uh, we're coming over with the Rishkar. Uh, that is protection from blue, but we are going to have trample. It is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine power with the hierarch. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I have a use for this thing anyway, so I'll at least eat three of the damage. Okay, you'll take six. This will go to my graveyard. A couple of triggers will happen. I'll get the sword trigger as well as the Kadama trigger, which I will do Kadama first. I will get this forest into play tapped. I'll resolve the sword trigger, which will put a one plus one plus one counter onto a creature, which will turn into two with a conclave mentor. We're going to trigger Kadama, and then we will proliferate and we will get an additional two counters onto everything. I'm a problem. <laughs> More shield counters. And then I will pass the turn. All right. Uh, in your end step, I will tap a mana to put a one one counter on my hanger back walker, and I will pay three to sacrifice this Dreamstone Hedron to draw three cards. And then do you play a Hedron that taps for four mana and lets you pay four to draw four cards? And then I will untap for my turn. In my upkeep, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven artifacts. So, seven. I'll go down to two because this still reduces my historic spells and I'll cast a Thopter Assembly. It's a five, five with flying at the beginning of my upkeep. If I control no Thopters other than Thopter Assembly, return this card to its owner's hand and create five one, one colors Thopter artifact creature tokens with flying. I currently control no other Thopters than that one for the record. Um, I will play a land for my turn. It is Arch of Araska. It has Ascend. If I control 10 or more permanents, I get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. It taps for a colorless and it can pay five and draw a card if I have the city's blessing. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 plus permanents. Uh, so I will get a city's blessing. I would like to go on record as saying, uh, we were told before this game, well, colorless decks only get really messed up if you can just push out mana super quickly. And I didn't see any of that in this deck. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Moments before disaster. <laughs> and then I will play for a single mana, a mirror retriever. Oh. Uh, just a little baby. He's a little guy. When he dies, I can return another target artifact card from my graveyard to my hand. So a little bit of board wipe insurance there if people are getting feisty. I am going to use my last floating mana and two to make Karn unblockable again. And I think I'm going to come at you, nerd girl. You're very hard to attack otherwise. All right. So that'll be another seven. Seven more. One more hit and I am done from that thing. And I'll pass the turn. I need to do like real adult people actions here. Mm, or we spin the wheel. So <laughs> this is what's going to happen. And I really hope that it works. Um, or I guess, you know, I can loot first. Let's loot first. I'm going to uh, tap this likeness loot looter copy and draw a card. And uh, I will get rid of this Thief of Sanity. I'm going to tap two for a Talisman of Dominance. And then I'm going to tap one, two, three, four, five for Virtue of Knowledge. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent I control to trigger, it triggers an additional time. I would like to go to combat. Please, please, please <laughs> give me some good stuff. Oh, I can tap something. I would like to tap that hanger back walker. I will tap to put a counter on it. Mm -hmm. So same thing. Same deal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Krothis is headed to Maldhound, and Gyruda is, I think, just going to die wherever it goes. Uh, so I will send it to, uh, I'll send that to make it. On attack, Krothis is going to make a copy of Gyruda. And because it is a Kraken, it will also make an additional copy of Gyruda. With two Gyruda copies coming in, I will get four Gyruda triggers because of Virtue of Knowledge. All right. So if everybody wants to mill four. Yeah, I'll reveal my first four. Uh, you got no creatures, but three lands and a windfall. No even-costed creatures, unfortunately. Just a three-cost creature. I also have no even-costed creatures. Uh, I have one. You have a Sisterhood of Karn. Incredible. I will take that one option that I have. <laughs> everybody mill four again. 
Ah, I have a steel overseer, so you can put one-one counters on all your artifact oh, creatures. <laughs> you have ruined my life. You got Lich's Mastery, Packed Weapon, Swamp, and then Chasm Skulker. So nothing you can use, but you have... <laughs> I also whiffed on mine. Also nothing you can use on mine. Oh my god. <laughs> So okay. All right. That means it's war- that's, the wheels are warmed up now. That means right, the right, next right. two are going to be all the trash. Yes. like a Kozilek is going to manifest into uh-huh. this deck and it'll be there waiting for you. All right. This is the third trigger. <laughs> All right. I've got so- I've gotten so- something juicy here. I have an end bringer. It untaps during each other player's untap step. You can tap it to deal one to any target. You can pay a color list to make target creature can't attack or block or two color list to draw a card. Okay. That's and it's something. I have whiffed once again. Nothing you from have me. removed another anti lose con of me, and then a bunch of stuff you can't use. Oh my god! All right, well, I will take the end bringer. Um, I do have one source of colorless, so uh, this is the final one. All oh, lands and arcane signets for me. Uh, only odd cost for me. Okay. <laughs> have dismantled everything uh, lands and then reverse the sands Ooh. one of the cards I was going to use to redistribute our life totals after I reached negative I finally got a good hit for mine but it is a good hit I'm gonna uh, grab my own Micaeus the Unhallowed um, it is a 5-5 five five with Intimidate uh, whenever a human deals damage to me I destroy it and other non-human creatures I control get plus one plus one and have undying uh, I think that is all of them right now. Flipping into Micaeus at the end there is great, but taking that many game actions always makes you the number one target at the table, and I didn't really hit anything else relevant. Krathis to Maudhound and Gyrida to Megan. Uh, does it have any uh, keywords I need to be aware of? Just a vanilla 6-6 six, six when it's swinging. I want my mirror retriever to die. Uh, to this block because I have a lot of juicy things in my graveyard now that you've milled me. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Um, But if I try and uh, double block to kill the guy Ruta, you can just assign all the lethal damage to the not mirror retriever. So tough decision for me on how or if I want to block this way. Also, if if you do kill guy Ruta, then it will just get undead and I will get two more triggers from Virtue Knowledge. Just kidding. <laughs> We're chumping. Uh-huh. <laughs> I will block with my tutu mirror retriever. Uh, it will die and I will fish something spicy out of my graveyard that I uh, hopefully will live to cast on this next turn. Let me take a look. And I don't think you can stop this three damage in the air. I sure can't. My heart says Meteor Golem, but my brain says locks it on Warhammer oh. for the lifelink. Um, I'm Ooh. dying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think I actually want some lifelink going in with my unblockable stuff that's going on. So I believe that is going to return to my hand. That's all I got. I'm going to pass the turn. I am going to play my own Temple of the False God. Looks so good on your board. I had to take some notes. I am going to take a little bit of a risk now. Tap four for the Lich's Tomb. I don't lose the game for having zero or less life, uh, but whenever I lose life, I sacrifice a permanent for each one life that I lost. So then what I'm going to do is tap four more for minions murmurs, draw X cards and lose X life where X is the number of creatures I control. So I'm going to draw eight and lose eight and sacrifice eight permanents. For the eight things that I sacrifice, I'm going to, mm, should have done this in main phase two, I'm going to pick six of the vampire creature tokens. Uh, I'm going to pick, let me create this off my board. I'm going to pick the talisman, and I'm going to pick a basic swamp, one of the ones that I had tapped. I'll move to my end step. I'm going to pay four more life. I'm going to make nine of my little 1-1 one, one friends, and then I'm going to sack four of them to end up with five 1-1 one, one lifelinkers, a relatively empty board, and uh, way more than 13 cards in hand for any Triskaidekaphile <laughs> players. Uh, Nerd girl, it's to you. I take absolutely no responsibility for that misplay. This was clearly a case of entrapment with the deck list that they gave me. I saw draw X cards on minions murmuring and my eyes glazed over like like these people knew that they would. I didn't I didn't think about the fact that I was not only non bowing myself, but anti comboing myself into dumping most of my field. All right. So this put me in a really crappy spot, huh? How much toughness does everyone have? Oof. I, I mean, oof. I have 15. 19. 
I have 11 total toughness. We're going to tap five. And we're going to play a deep glow skate. Mm. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, I get to double the number of each kind of counter on any number of permanents. And I'll get an additional plus one, plus one for those for the mentor. I should yeah. never. You could just yeah. I'm help, just, your, all your help, your, <laughs> help yourself. <laughs> I think I have to do too much to veggie to, to kill both of you. If I kill Veggie, will you not commander damage me? We can make a deal. I feel like that sounds fair. I think that sounds fair. You do have my life in your hands. I am, I'm in a very uh, precarious position right now. Great. Well, I will, I will not <laughs> attack you if you will not Karn me. I will not attack you with Karn. Great. We're going to uh, go into Veggie for a little more than 30 or a little more than 40. Every creature is more than 10, 10 attack. I would have let you live if that thing did not happen, but <laughs> but I I can't with that thing. Oh yeah, I think I needed that thing to happen a little bit bigger than it happened. I'll block enough to kill the biophages, I guess, and I'll dead. So biophages will die, uh, veggie will die. I will get to have a couple of triggers. First, I'll get to put a counter onto something, and we will choose to put that counter onto the deep glow skate. Uh, it will be two counters because of the Conclave Mentor, and then I will get to proliferate everything, which will be two counters because of the same reason. And then my Kadama will also trigger. I had three creatures deal combat damage. I will get three basics and put them into play tapped. Poor, poor you. I don't think the mana was the issue. I don't yeah. I think, I think you were poor, doing fine. <laughs> the poor, poor mana screwed bant player. All right. At your end step, uh, nerd girl, I'm going to tap one, two, three, four, five, and activate my Arch of Araska to draw a card. We'll see if this is the one. Upkeep, I'll return this to my hand to get five Thopters, and then I'll get my mana, just in case it matters. Um, so I will get five Thopters, so that's one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'll have twelve floating mana. That's better. Go down to nine for a trading post. Trading post lets me pay a couple of different things. I can pay one to discard a card to gain some life. Pay one and a life to make a goat. Pay one and sacrifice a creature to return target artifact card from my graveyard to my hand, or sacrifice an artifact to draw a card. Who we have a spicy turn. Okay. I guess those are my options. I can take her to one and she has only three blockers and I can only attack with three things essentially because I'm not allowed to attack with these. Mm -hmm. You would still be alive. So we can make a king make situation here yeah, we if you are satisfied with second place. But wait, wait, wait. King make? But why Why am I not in the conversation for You're the making? You're the problem that we're trying to solve with the king making. But he is the kingmaker, not you. He is. He's deciding which one of us will win. And he has decided that second place is better than last place. He's in second place both times. If because if I don't help you, then nerd girl you still get second place. You. Well, here's the thing. If hmm. I mean, I'm gonna help you regardless. But I, would love, <laughs> I would love to see. I would love to see what the like. The, so I'm emotionally I'm torn because I have to side with either Bant counters or Karn. Both of these are horribly distasteful to me, and I can't honestly. My I like my brain is short circuited so hard from this whole Lich's Tomb debacle. I can't remember. I know you wronged me. I don't remember how. I don't remember when. I know you've wronged me. I don't know if you've wronged me this game. I feel like. We've just like passed each other by this yeah, whole game. I don't think I've even attacked Here's a question. Have you helped design any Karn cards? Ooh. No. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> I was, if she has, yeah, then she's wronged you. <laughs> I was trying. <laughs> it's my last ditch effort. That was a good try. That was a good one. Um, okay. So I think that is the play. As much as it hurts to lose to any iteration of Karn, I will take some small solace in the knowledge that I could so thoroughly devastate my own game plan and still beat a Bant player. So I will use one mana of my floating Karn mana to activate Trading Post. I'll sacrifice one of these Thopters to return Fire Shrieker from my graveyard to my hand. I will cast that Fire Shrieker. Fire Shrieker is an equipment that gives equipped creature a double strike and has equipped two. I will also play from my hand. I'll actually gain a mana back because I keep forgetting I cost one less. So we'll go up to six and then I will go down to four because I will be casting Loxodon Warhammer. 
It's also an equipment. Equipped creature gets plus three, but so has trample and a lifelink equip three. I'll use the remainder of my floating plus one to equip both of these to my hanger back walker. My hanger back walker is now eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. It is a 12, 12 double strike trample lifelinker that I can make unblockable. I can take nerd girl down to 24 life or down from 25 life to one life, but I can't quite finish her off because the rest of her blockers. Maltound. Yes. Would you like to make a deal? I would be so open to making a deal right now. <laughs> I can't get the last point of damage in. Would you be willing to do the honors and take out Nerd Girl for me on your turn? The counter deal is mm -hmm. that then you get the one turn that you take me out on. I will block your stuff and then she will untap and kill you. The other side of it is you don't kill me. I spend my turn killing her and you mm -hmm. get a second turn to find answers. Counter to the counter deal. Mm -hmm. If you don't accept my deal, I kill you right now and I oh. take second place. Ouch. I don't have anything that beats that. But I am deeply petty. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, it's too juicy to misplay this badly and still technically finish ahead of you two. So I'm going to take the deal <laughs> and get second. You promise? I promise. Shake Swe on it? Swearsies, realsies. All Trap. right. I will. Trap. Activate. <laughs> I will activate my manifold key targeting my hanger back walker to make it unblockable, and I will send all that juicy damage at Nerd Girl. And I will take it all going to one. And I will gain a 24 life back. I believe Maldhound will uphold his end of the deal, so I will not play anything else. I will not, I'll just pass the turn. <laughs> Is it good? No. I'm dead, man. Uh... I'm f 6 it's not good. It just, I might not be out of the game. Uh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Please, please, please. I mean, we did see that let's just tune play, so I don't, I don't necessarily trust it till I see it on the board. <laughs> yeah, true, 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 true. Right, 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 right. Uh, oh, it's, okay. Tap three to play the sorcery damnable pack target player draws x cards and loses x life you're gonna draw one card and lose one life mm. so that i can keep my boys up two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen okay <laughs> just three cards just three cards just three cards just three cards did i play a land for turn but oh. you have to have it on your upkeep right so you'd have to yes. also survive yeah yes but there's a there's a there's a significant chance i can survive uh mm, wow so I don't think I played land for turn. Okay, so I'm gonna play a swamp. So that should be 15 left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm going to tap Temple of the False God to play Thought Vessel. Uh, so at 14 cards in hand, I will pass the turn. <laughs> Well, since this game lasted uh, one turn longer than I thought it would, I will go ahead and activate my Arch of Araska. So two, three, four, five, and I will draw my card. Upkeep, I will draw. I will add one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh my God, so much mana. I will use one of this mana to sacrifice one of these Thopters to return this Meteor Golem from my graveyard to my hand. Ooh. Ooh. Wait, 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 wait. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that's fine. You know that known information? Yeah. Uh, I will pay six mana for this Meteor Golem. Uh, so we'll do 13 minus six is seven. And I will cast this Meteor Golem. Meteor Golem, if it will enter the battlefield, will destroy target non land permanent and opponent controls. It is a seven mana three three. Does it resolve? It's probably hitting Lich's tomb. Yeah, that's true. Actually, you can go ahead and take care of this. Yeah, you can clear that off the board. Yeah, it resolves. I will destroy the Triskadeka file. Just as I planned. <laughs> Just as I planned. I will play a land for turn. It is Tomb of the Spirit Dragon. I may pay two and activate it to gain one life for each colorless creature I control. It also taps for a colorless. 
So I'm gonna activate uh, Manifold Key. I'm gonna make Karn Legacy Reforged unblockable. And I'm gonna go to combat and I'm gonna send Karn Hangerback Walker, three Thopters and a Joyrus Familiar at you. Thank you very much. Move these down here so we can see everything. I'm gonna mortify one of your thopters. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Uh, Almost gonna, had it. Super gonna, dead thopter. And I'm gonna tap Caves of Coilos for a colored mana, even though I don't need to, to take one life and sacrifice Lich's Tomb. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll declare no blocks because the math doesn't matter. And then I'll, <laughs> and then I'll die. <laughs> GG will play. I'll die after these two. And yes. That's what matters. What matters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> it wasn't even for everybody in the comments that's already writing a dissertation on how stupid I am. It wasn't even don't play Lich's Tomb. It was just play Lich's Tomb second. Yeah. <laughs> and I would have had like 20 vampires to sacrifice. So, like, you know what? I had an absolute blast playing this Karn deck. The big mana was a ton of fun, and it wasn't as spooky as I thought it would be. I've been shying away from building a big mana deck, especially a colorless deck, because it seems like it's always going to be that, you know, boogeyman at the table. But I had so much fun playing giant things every turn, and I was also really excited for the game to keep going because I had this cool trading post combo, combo, uh, with my manifold key, and I just wanted to, you know, wring every last bit of value out of my deck. And I love that the deck had both value and stompy aspects to it. It just had all the fun things that I love. Cool Stuff Inc. is the best place to pick up anything from sealed product to singles. And you can use code MNG5 at checkout for 5% off your order. I mean, I'm only 23. How much? You're 23? No. Yeah. I'm either 19 or like 60. Don't, <laughs> don't speak my truth for me. Let, me. let me lie to the nice new person. I really, I really thought I was going to sneak the silliest and or goofiest win of the century with Triskaidecka file. And if it wasn't, if it wasn't for that gosh darned publicly available information of the meteor golem in Megan's graveyard, I would have gotten there. <laughs> <laughs> I won. The end. <laughs> When it comes to deck building websites, Moxfield has everything. You can catalog your collection, update your deck lists, follow your favorite deck builders, and share all of your deck lists with your friends. And speaking of following your favorite deck builders, you can head on over to our Moxfield account, give us a follow, and keep up to date on every single deck list we've ever featured here on the show. Oh, shit. I mean, oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, no, I'm good. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do shit to you in one more turn, so I am locked in, I am locked in dumb baby jail of my own making. Maltown got to decide the winner of this game, and he said that I probably have wronged him in a past life, so I'm thinking that 30-30 Vorinclex might have left some permanent damage. We'd like to thank our renowned patrons Blightstorm, John H., Magic Cave, and Tyler M. And we'd like to thank our legendary patrons, Harley Green, D. Schultz, Kai Soren, Sligo Yanks, Gamer Dad, and Guy. This deck was so satisfying to play. I lost, but I got to dump big blue baddies onto the table, take a million game actions, and I can't be disappointed with that. Don't look over here. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to see over here. <laughs> That's how I feel when people highlight your stuff on Arena. As I'll see, I'd be like, don't, hey, <laughs> yo, 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 yo. They start highlighting the wrong thing. You're like, yes, yes, yes. yes. My, yes. <laughs> what gives me so much life is when you like punk somebody and then they start confusedly highlighting stuff on the board to try to figure out what happened. Like, oh. <laughs> We'd like to thank our patrons. Without your support, these episodes wouldn't be possible. And they could be the most possible they could possibly be with your help. We, for this month of December, have been doing weekly episodes and we'd love to continue doing that. We just need a little help. We have a goal of $2,500 so that way we can continue doing weekly episodes for the full year of 2024. So if you would like to become a part of the show and help us hit that goal, please head on over to our Patreon where you can unlock exclusive perks like monthly signed tokens from the guests and cast. You can also play some spell table games with us, even submit your own deck list to play here on the show. And of course, you can always help us out by 
clicking like if you liked the video and subscribe if you really liked it. Uh, That's all for today. We will see you next time on Decked Decked Out. Out.